Well, tomorrow, Mike Rand will drop in on the Governor and ask him to issue the writs for the March 20th election, kicking off the campaign proper. Now, I spoke to the Premier a short time ago and asked if Carlene Maywald owed him some loyalty. Carlene Maywald's a fantastic Member of Parliament for her area, for the Riverland. There isn't a greater advocate in the nation for the River Murray than Carlene Maywald. But one thing that I love about her is that she's fiercely independent. She says what she means, she means what she says, she calls it as it is. And that's what she brings to the Cabinet table. Rather than a backbencher, she comes in, not a member of the Labor Party, never will be, never has been, but she comes into the Cabinet and brings a rural perspective, a rural culture, and also a regional view of things. I think that she's been a terrific uh, cabinet minister, and I think she's been the great advocate nationally for the Riverland. That's so it sounds like she'll be a minister if you get back? Oh, I absolutely would hope so. I mean, she's been really been a great source of strength for the river, and she's been fighting for the river harder than anybody. Now, you've been attacking the Liberals for their costings over the expressway. <coughs> Why won't you release yours? We will. What we do is, we, yesterday we published how much uh, the expressway would cost. We did that, in fact, uh, uh, the day before. And what we do is, we, what we've done is get a AAA credit rating because we've actually taken care about costings. We've taken care about fixing the state's finances. But what we highlighted yesterday, what Kevin Foley brought out, was that the Liberals' costings are basically worked out from Messenger Press articles or on the back of an envelope. And I think people deserve better than that. Ours are done by Treasury. Ours are done by the Department of Transport and Energy and Infrastructure. And we think that's the appropriate thing to do. Now, why should we trust you to build it, though? Because John Hill was saying last month that wouldn't happen, and mm -hmm. two South Road underpasses that have been promised haven't been done. Well, just look, if, if you look at infrastructure spending, Ian, just look at the delivery. Five times more spent on infrastructure under our government than our predecessors. Everything from a desalination plant that will be powered totally by renewable energy to you know, hospital redevelopments at the La McEwen, Flinders. The biggest road building effort in the state's history, and, and that includes 600 million for the Northern Expressway, 800 million for the Superway, and of course what we did, we got a 30-year plan for Metropolitan Adelaide. And but in what that, were you no, saying as recently as last month that you wouldn't build it? I, I'll explain that. The 30-year the, the plan for Metropolitan Adelaide, whose draft was, the draft plan was released about six months ago, spelt out that it would need to be done. So what we did is we were looking at doing the Darlington interchange. If we'd built the Darlington interchange, given that there's 55,000 homes projected, new homes projected for the southern suburbs over the next 30 years, built it, and that's difficult because it's a you know, one-way expressway that turns round, we'd have to then rip it down again to start again for the duplication, and that would have been wasteful. So the day that I was releasing the 30-year plan uh, for Adelaide, we thought that, OK, let's bite the bullet. We've listened to people in the southern suburbs. Rather than doing it in a piecemeal way, let's fix it once and for all. And that's the message we got from people in the southern suburbs, that they thought a one-way expressway, which was built before we came to power, was not only frustrating but confusing and would be, end up being a massive bottleneck given the population projections for both the southern suburbs and the Fleury Peninsula. But suddenly you've got to find $400 million to yeah, do it. But that was provision. We provision for these things and that's the difference. What we do is carefully cost, not just plucking figures out of the, the sky like the Liberals are. But on that point, why is it then that more people trust Isabel Redmond than you? Look, it, it, they don't even trust each other, the Liberals. They spend, it, there's been four But what about Liberal, the public? No, no, the public no, no, seem I'll to talk, trust Isabel I'll talk Redmond. about that. If it's about trust, then I'm happy because the Liberals don't trust each other. There's been four Liberal opposition leaders in the four year, four, last four years alone, six that I've had to face, six Liberal leaders. This election, and it's going to be obviously officially called tomorrow, even though March the 20th has been known for eight years as the date, it's about who you trust to keep jobs growth going. We've got record numbers of people in jobs in the state's history. 111,300 more people in work than there were under the Liberals. Two Amy Stadiums for. Who do you trust to keep winning defence contracts? Who do you trust to keep winning projects? Who do you trust to negotiate the best deal from Kevin Rudd? Who do you trust to keep the state moving ahead? 
What South Australians will want to see on election day, I'm sure, when they go into that polling booth, they're going to be asking themselves, is our state better off now than it was under the Liberals? And secondly, who can you trust to fight for jobs in this state, whereas the Liberals spend all of their time fighting with each other? Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Ian.